What's up guys? I'm the Pop Rocker. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed my quick little review of the Suicide Squad the other day. If you haven't seen it, be sure to go check that out. But I've got something entirely new for you guys today. All week I look forward to Fridays because that's when all the new music is released out into the world for us to listen to. Every Friday I like to take some time to myself, sit down, relax, scroll through the iTunes store, and then spend way more money than I should on music I could get for free on Spotify. But support the arts. And I decided, why not try to make something else out of that? So I'm bringing to you my weekly music haul. It's another new series I'm gonna be trying out where I take all the music I find every Friday, listen to it, and tell you guys what I think. Maybe I can give you guys something new to listen to as well. Now, as the name implies, this will be a weekly occurrence except when I can't manage to do it. If you've been around on the channel for a little while, you probably know that keeping up with schedules isn't my best asset. And honestly, some weeks there just isn't anything good. But this week, there was plenty. So let's go ahead and jump into everything I found. Nas, King's Disease 2. So for a Nas album in 2021, it's actually pretty good. It definitely wasn't album of the year by any means, but Nas has been around for like 30 years, and most musicians pretty much lose their polish by then. And honestly, when you keep that in mind, this was a great album. The features all made sense. In some cases, they were great. In others, like Lauren Hill, they were the best thing about the album. I probably won't revisit this album again, but I imagine bigger fans of his definitely will. Would I recommend it? Yes. Sarah Caves, Struck by Lightning. This was a pretty good singer-songwriter-ish EP. It's got some nice hooks, some clean production on it, but it isn't the most original. I've definitely heard this sound many times before. It doesn't completely blend into the rest of the genre, and I'll probably go back a few more times, but I don't know if I'm gonna remember this exists at the end of the year. Would I recommend it? Maybe. Hippocampus. Good dog, bad dream. This was interesting. I've never heard of this band before, but based on some research I did, I guess I probably should have. It seems like they've gotten a fairly decent following considering how long they've been around. This basically sounds like the kind of EP that people in college 10 years ago would be passing around campus everywhere. And maybe that still applies now. I don't know, this wasn't really my thing, but for people who like this kind of music, I think they'd probably enjoy it a lot. Would I recommend it? I'd say check it out and see if you're into it, but I'm not. Foxing, Draw Down the Moon. I honestly don't know how I feel about this album. I had heard some Foxing songs in the past, but never like a full project from them. So I wasn't really sure what to expect going in. And I'm honestly still not sure. I'd say this album is what happens when you mix Tame Impala with Taking Back Sunday and sprinkle in a little extra angst. My issue is, there's nothing on the album that's really that memorable to me. Like, I can't name a single song that I listen to, but something about it is just drawing me back for another listen. Would I recommend this? Yes. But also, don't take my word for it, I guess. Tinashe, 333. Oh my god, I love this album. Every single song feels unique, and there's never a dull moment across 16 tracks. 16! Tinashe has this ability to completely show up with something creative out of nowhere, but doesn't overdo it, so every single time it feels completely special. I think I've already listened to this album five or six times in the past few days. This is definitely my pick of the week. Would I recommend this? Absolutely. The Wandering Hearts, self-titled. This is the first I've heard of this group, and I definitely like them, but I don't love them. They fit great into the folk country genre, but I don't think they feel the most unique. They're six or seven years too late, in my opinion. People who are deeper in that scene might feel differently from me one way or another, and that's fine. But to me, I feel like there's other people who sound like this group already. Outside of all that, though, this album's pretty well put together. It's got some good songs on it. Would I recommend it? Probably. And that was my weekly music haul. Thank you guys for watching. I know I ask you to comment a lot, but if you guys could do me an extra special favor and give me some feedback on this series, it's something that I really want to pay attention to and do something great with. Should I say more, say less? Should I focus on singles? What do you guys want to see? Let me know. 
Also, if there's any music I missed out on this week, let me know down in the comments below. And until next week, I've been the Pop Rocker, and I'll see you guys in the next video.